Welcome back. In this video, we will add a background to our game. Let's start by setting the right width and height to our game. As we discussed, this is done through our project settings in the display section. So let's go ahead and update that right here. Uh, we're going to be using a width of 1280 and the height, we can leave it as it is. It's, that's going to work for us. There's no particular reason why we chose this. This is just the design we wanted, the layout. Uh, you can, in your games, you can set it to whatever works for you. Now, let's add our assets to our game. Download the assets provided in the description below. There's going to be a link. Uh, once you download them, it should have about three images. Once you're done, let's go ahead and create a folder at the top of our project folder and we're going to call this assets. This is where we're going to be storing different kinds of assets in the, in the feature. We're going to be adding fonts and whatnot. But for now, because we're going to be adding some images, let's go ahead and create another folder this time inside the assets folder. We'll call it images. Now let's add the images we've downloaded. We can do so simply by dragging and dropping them into default and that should be enough. With our images in the project, let's go ahead and create an atlas. We're going to create it inside the main folder here. Right click, new, atlas. We'll call this images. And we'll go ahead and add the images to the atlas. In a bit, we're going to discuss what an atlas is in the default context, but for now, just right click, add images, and make sure you choose the ones that we just added, the ones that are under assets. Uh, we're not going to be using the built in ones, which are just logos and things like that. Okay, now well, let's just zoom out. I think with the default by default, it's going to add them, create like very big atlas. Okay, this is what it looks like. So, what is an atlas? It's a tool that default gives us to load multiple images in a more performant way. This is more important when we're talking about mobile games, for example. It combines separate images and creates a large image for all of them. And underneath the hood, it handles all the magic, so it chooses the appropriate one when we're using the individual ones. You can not only add images, but also animations. Although for this tutorial series, we're going to be sticking with images mainly. Okay. Now that we've got the Atlas in place, let's go ahead and actually add the background to our game. Let's go to the main collection. And we're going to create a new game object. So you can right click add game object or just hit the A key. We're going to call this background. And so what is the game object? Game objects are mainly containers where we add other components. As we can see, a game object has a position, a rotation, and scale. We'll be mainly working with the position throughout the series. And in our case, we're going to be adding a sprite component. So let's go ahead and do that. If you hit A, this is the window you get to see. I'm going to choose Sprite. And with it, let's go ahead and choose the image. This might be a bit unexpected if you're not familiar with default. But here we choose the actual the atlas that we're going to be using. And under animation, we choose the image we're using. Right? Remember, we can also use animations here, but we're not going to be using that. So let's choose the background animation. Let's zoom out a bit so we can actually see what's going on. There we go. So let's save this and let's run the project and let's see what it looks like. You can do that like through project, build, or just hit Control B. Oh, let's go ahead and click that. And whoops, guess we're not done yet. So let's go back and actually fix this. The reason why this is happening is because in default, the pivot point for game objects is in the center. So what it's doing is the center is at position zero, zero, right? And zero, zero in default is at the bottom left corner. So our screen is actually looking something like this. It's around this place. We only see a fourth of the background in the bottom left corner. If we want to position this in the middle of the screen, what we can do is simply set the X as 640, which is going to be half of the width of both the background and the screen, and the Y as 320. 
and to make sure that this is working, let's go ahead and run it again, control B, and there we go. Now the background is covering the whole screen. If you've used multiple game engines or libraries in the past, you probably know they all do it differently for the most part. As we mentioned, in default, the pivot point is in the middle of the game objects, at least by default. Once we get to look at GUIs, we'll see that we can actually change that, but not right here. And again, just remember that the 0, zero coordinates are in the bottom left corner. One last thing I want to point out is that be very mindful of actually setting the position in the game object, the background game object, and not the sprite. It's a common mistake. In this specific scenario, it's not that important because we're not going to be moving the background game object. But once we start adding more elements into the game, especially dynamic ones that we're going to be moving, it's going to be a, it, it's going to create a problem. So be mindful. Okay, and that, that's it for this video. As always, we're going to leave links in the description below with further reading materials if you want to deepen your knowledge in some of the areas we've discussed. And see you in the next one.